So first we have Byzantine fault tolerance. We've got generals, multiple voting rounds, gossip about gossip, virtual voting, strong witnesses, famous witnesses, and a cryptographic time stamping mechanism that ensures fairness in transaction ordering. Is this confusion anything like what you've been feeling trying to dig into Adara? This is how it was for me, and I decided there needed to be a much easier explanation. If you're excited to finally understand this stuff without the headache, hit the like button. In the 60s, critical systems needed backup. Multiple computers ran the same logic, so if one failed, the others outvoted it. But what if some were hacked? That's where the Byzantine generals problem comes in. Imagine generals planning an attack. Some are loyal, but some might be traitors. They send messengers, but messages might be fake. All loyal generals must agree, even if the decision is not the right one. Disagreement is failure. With three generals, one traitor alone can ruin everything. The fix? More than two-thirds, and I emphasize more, more than two-thirds must be honest. Pay attention to this two-thirds number because it's going to keep coming up. This is Byzantine fault tolerance. The system works even if some nodes lie, go offline, or try to sabotage. But there's another issue. Time. What if someone submits a transaction and tricks the system into thinking it happened earlier, like buying a stock before a price spike? That's why we need asynchronous Byzantine fault tolerance, or ABFT, a system that still reaches agreement even with delays or out-of-order messages. Cryptographic signatures prevent lying, but they still require multiple voting rounds. Each round slows everything down. What if we didn't need rounds? What if we could predict someone's vote without sending it? That's what Hedera Hashgraph is. Hedera Hashgraph is built as a DAG, a directed acyclic graph. You can think of it like every participant in the network keeping a personal diary. In the Hedera Hashgraph, we have what are called events, and these are like a new entry in a diary. The event records what that participant just heard from someone else's diary, and indirectly everything that came before that. Each event contains two hashes, one for the previous event, which is called the self-parent, and it's like the previous page in the diary, and one for the last event they heard from someone else's diary, which is called the other parent. These hashes are like tamper-proof fingerprints. They prove exactly what was written and who wrote it. If even one letter in the event changes, the hash completely changes. And because the event is digitally signed, anyone can verify that one, it really came from who it claims to be from, and two, it hasn't been altered. So when someone shares a new event, what they're really saying is, hey, here's what I just learned, here's what I knew before, and here's cryptographic proof that I'm not lying about any of it. These two hash links form a web of entries where every new diary page connects to prior ones, locking in the history behind it. When nodes gossip events, they only send that one new diary page. But if the receiving node doesn't have one of the earlier entries it pointed to for whatever reason, it can simply ask for it just using the hash, like a unique page ID. This continues until it has the full backstory. Because every event is cryptographically tied to what came before it, Nodes can rebuild the full DAG, check that nothing was altered, and catch any manipulation instantly. Now here's where it gets cool. Nodes don't send votes, they just gossip diary entries. These spread quickly and everyone ends up with everyone else's story. These entries are grouped into rounds, and rounds are like chapters in the diary. The first entry a person writes in each chapter or round is called a witness. The witness is exactly the same as the first page in every chapter of the diary. Each witness checks whether it can strongly see the witnesses or the first pages from the previous round or chapter, meaning its message traces through a path that touches more than two thirds of the network. You don't have to receive messages from everyone. Just one diary is enough. If that diary entry shows the message passed through the supermajority, then the node tallies which earlier witnesses do I strongly see? And remember, the witnesses are like the first pages in the chapters. And it starts voting on which ones are famous, meaning the first diary entry in that chapter got seen by a supermajority of the people. If they can't decide every 10 chapters, they just flip a digital coin. Once famous witnesses are identified, they're used to finalize consensus or agreement. Each event is given a timestamp based on when those famous witnesses first saw it. 
Hedera takes the median of those times, which is just the time right in the middle of all the times. The median is more useful than the average in case some malicious person posted times 100 years in the future or 100 years in the past. Taking the median helps guarantee that the timestamp on all the events are fair and they reflect when the famous witnesses saw them. This is how Hedera reaches agreement without slow voting, endless messages, or any one person being in control. It's fast, it's fair, and it's foolproof. If you want to see the whole algorithm step by step, from gossip to famous voting to final timestamps, I've got a deep dive coming soon. Hit subscribe if you want to see it, how it actually works behind the scenes. To prevent an attacker from creating thousands of nodes to overwhelm the system, Hedera uses staking of the coin HBAR. To participate, nodes need HBAR. More HBAR equals more votes. Creating thousands of fake nodes gets expensive fast. Try to attack and the network would lose trust, crashing your HBAR's value. Hedera can process 10,000 plus transactions per second right now with a theoretical ceiling above 100,000. Combine that with ABFT or asynchronous Byzantine fault tolerance and it's a game changer. The Hedera hashcraft could be used in finance to prevent front running by fairly ordering transactions, which is essential for high stakes trading and digital asset exchange. It can be used in gaming to enable real time tamper-proof updates to in-game assets and results without relying on centralized servers, and it eliminates individual cheaters saying, for example, that they fired their laser a second earlier than they did. Supply chain? Hedera can maintain a shared immutable record across companies even if partners don't fully trust each other. Web3? Supporting decentralized identity and user-owned data, which can empower users to control their digital presence across platforms. The Hedera Hashgraph is not just another block. Blockchain. It's literally next generation infrastructure. If you finally understand Hedera Hashgraph better than ever before, hit subscribe so you don't miss what's coming next. If you like these types of breakdowns, you should check out another one I did on another complex topic, XRP and RLUSD, and how they could reshape global payments. You definitely don't want to miss this one.